Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome to the fifth video in the Circular Motion series for Level 3 Physics. Uh, in the last video, we looked at vertical circles, or vertical circular motion. But that circular motion, we were looking at um, situations where the speed is kept constant. We're going to have a very quick look at situations where we have um, vertical circular motion and the speed changes. So the example we're going to look at is the picture here. We've got a roller coaster. It gets pulled up a hill and then it just rolls from with its own energy um, down the hill and hits the loop to loop. So we've got A is where it's up high, B is at the bottom of the hill, and C is at the top of the uh, loop to loop. So let's look at the energy in the system at each point. Now I love to describe energy using energy bar charts, and I will have a video up on that in level two, so you can search for that. Uh, if you haven't come across that before. But it's just a good visual way to show what's going on without being confused by equations. So at point A, the um, roller coaster is up high, so it has lots of gravitational energy, and it's also moving as well. So it has some small amount of kinetic energy. At position B, when it gets to the bottom there, it's no longer has any gravitational energy because it's at its lowest point. And all of that gravitational energy has been converted into kinetic energy. So the important thing with the energy bar charts is that the total remains the same. So you can see now there's five bars of kinetic energy. As it rolls up and around this loop to loop, up to the point C there, it gains some height, so that's gravitational energy, although it's not as high as point A. So it doesn't have four bars, it just has three. And then the difference from the total energy we've always had, which is five bars, um, gives us the kinetic energy, which in this case is the two bars. Now, kinetic energy we know is calculated by half mv squared. So at position B, which is at the bottom of the loop to loop, and is now he's entered the circular motion. This roller coaster has has started the circle at point B. Because there's more kinetic energy at point B, and because it therefore has a larger velocity, it means it's going to have a larger total force, which is your, your force which causes circular motion. So at point B it has a large total force, and that's upwards because it's towards the centre of the circle. At point C, its kinetic energy is, is much less, and because its kinetic energy is less, its velocity is less because of the formulas, therefore its total force, or its circular force, or centripetal force, as we also call it, is going to be smaller. So we have a situation here where not only um, in a normal circular motion the, the total force always points to the, at the center but that changes depending on where you are in the circle. Here we have the total force changing in size and the way we deal with this is to, um, to use energy. So the best thing I can always advise is draw your energy bar charts. They'll help you to do any calculations you need to when you need to invoke the actual energy um, formulas. But getting the energy bar charts right um, just gets your head in the right space to work out, oh, I see there's no gravitational energy in, in position B. Oh, oh, some of that gravitational energy um, has come back in position C, but we've lost the, that amount of kinetic energy to make that happen.